In high school, you were introduced to some of the historical experiments that ultimately led to the development of the ideal gas law. You learned about Charles's law and Boyle's law. In addition to these two laws, Avogadro and Guy Lussac had similar laws. I'm actually not too interested in these early laws as they specifically held two parameters constant and presented a relationship between the other two parameters in the ideal gas equation. A more generalized version of these laws is the combined gas equation. To derive the combined gas equation, we need to realize that the gas constant R is a constant. So we have the equation that R is equal to PV over NT. We have two states of the system in which R is a constant. So R is always going to be the same value. So this leads to the relationship P1V1 over N1T1 equals P2V2 over N2T2. And this is the combined gas equation. So now that we have the combined gas equation, we can derive the historical gas laws. In the case of Boyle's law, the number of moles and temperature are held constant, resulting in the equation P1V1 equals P2V2. In the case of Charles's law, the pressure and number of moles are held constant, resulting in the equation V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Do you need to know these laws? No. Once you have the combined gas equation, you can use that to understand how the state of a gas changes. In addition, the combined gas equation is more robust in that it is not limited to holding two parameters constant. I'm guessing that you've seen a helium balloon floating into the air maybe you were the one to release it. What happens as that balloon goes skyward? We can apply the combined gas equation to answer this question. So we have the combined gas equation. And we can set the states of the system. So let's set state one is equal to the ground state. And then the ground state was provided is P1 is equal to 0 0.952 bar. The initial volume, we don't know, but we can calculate given the value, the data that's there. But we do know the initial temperature is equal to 301 Kelvin. So to calculate the volume, the equation of a sphere is V is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. We're told that the radius is equal to 6 inches, which is 15 centimeters. And you would be given the conversion from inches to centimeters. And so when we substitute that in here, we find out that the initial volume is 14.1 liters. So state 2 is at 5 kilometers altitude. And so P2 is provided as 0 0.505 bar. V2, we don't know, but that's what we're looking for. And T2 is provided at 269 Kelvin. This is the available data we have. We don't know anything about the number of moles inside of the balloon. But thinking about how a balloon is going to tr exists, the number of moles is going to be constant so we can cancel it out of our combined gas equation. So now taking all of this data, rearranging the combined gas equation,
to solve for V2. And substituting in all our values, we find that V2 is equal to 23.8 liters. That is the volume of the balloon at 5 kilometers altitude. If the balloon has the ability to expand to that volume, it will. If not, of course, it will just rupture the balloon membrane. To see an example of this, recall the Red Bull Stratos mission with Felix Baumgartner jumping from 39 kilometers in altitude. While watching this video, look at the size of the balloon as a function of altitude. Specifically, look at approximately 1 minute and 55 seconds, which is the ground level size, and 2 minutes and 25 seconds, which is the size of the balloon at 33 kilometers in altitude. We got to get Felix off the ground safely and not tear the balloon. And uh, we need optimum conditions. So as the weather person here, we're going to be very, very, very picky in picking the right conditions. Felix has uh, completed his physical. Uh, I've been working four years on the program. I believe in what Felix is trying to do. Uh, to test the next generation full pressure suit and I'm just delighted to be a member of the team. This is mission control at this time. Felix is departing his Airstream trailer to be strapped into the Stratos capsule. I will assess the situation again. We will not start inflating as soon as the balloon's completed laying out. Copy so there'll, there'll be another small hold. T minus one hour, 13 minutes. We're going to go on hold. Chuck Yeager was the first man to go supersonic in an aircraft. It was 65 years ago, and I think it would be just absolutely wonderful if we could get Felix to go supersonic without an airplane on the same day that uh, Chuck Yeager flew supersonic in an airplane. At this time, we have begun balloon inflation. Capsule systems are green, instrumentation's green, payload's green, medical systems are green. There's the release. And there's the applause, a successful rise. This is Mission Control. Felix's current altitude is uh, 25,300 feet. We're at 108,000 feet. There is a an issue with the heat in the faceplate mission for the time being is continuing as the team considers what are the options so the decision has been made the Baumgartner will jump
when you're standing out there on that step, on top of the world, you know, you become so humble. At that moment, it's not about breaking records anymore.